from chapter 8, 2 Kings, beginning at verse number 1, reading through verse number 6. Then spoke Elijah unto the woman, whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou and thy household, and sojourn wheresoever thou can sojourn. For the Lord has called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines and she went forth to appeal unto the king for her house and her land. And the king talked with Jehaji, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elijah has done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life appealed to the king for her house, and for her land. And Jehazi said, My Lord, O King, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elijah restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king assigned unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore. Restore. Restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. This morning, let me spend a moment with you as God would allow. With this is the title of our message. God has not forgotten. As I said to you this morning, Sister Sarah, God has not forgotten. As I've spoken to you on many occasions, Sister Joy, God has not forgotten. Mother Woods, God has not forgotten. Nathan Hawkins. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God has not forgotten. Yes, Sister Bishop. People of God. Amen. Allow me to ask God's grace that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, dear Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Saints of God, I'm here at the will of God with a message from the Lord that he has not forgotten you. The Shunammite woman remains one of the few people recorded in the Bible that was restored not once, but twice in the blessings that she had lost. And today, I'm here to remind you, people of God, that her restoration was the result of her deep and abiding faith in God. Yeah. The word of God for us is that what he did for this woman, he also will do for you. We first learn about this woman of wealth 
The Bible describes her in the fourth chapter as a great woman. And I believe she was great not just because of her money, but because of her heart. Greatness has nothing to do with wealth. Greatness has nothing to do with position. Greatness has to do with character. The Bible describes her as a great woman. There's greatness in you. There's greatness in this room. Somebody once said, you don't have to be famous to be great. My prayer to God is that you are a great mother, a great father, a great friend. A great person. The Bible in the fourth chapter introduces us to this woman, this Shunammite woman. It was in that fourth chapter when she observed Elijah, the prophet, coming through her town of Shunam. He was sharing God's word and doing God's work. And she noticed this woman. That the man of God needed a place to stay any time he passed through her town. And so this woman, in the fourth chapter of this second Kings, this woman spoke to her husband and asked her husband if it would be possible to build a room on the roof of their house so that the prophet would have a more comfortable place to stay whenever he and his servant, Jehaji, came through town. Thankfully, this man listened to his wife. Thankfully. And as a result, a place was built. And every time the man of God came through town, he was assured of being able to find rest and refuge. In this home. I pray to God that you are of the same spirit. That you are willing to open your heart. To others who have need. In particular to those who are doing the work of God. So it is my friends because of her kindness. Because of her kindness Elisha the prophet wanted to bless her. And so he asked. Can I introduce you to the king? Elijah had the privilege of having access to the king of the country. So Elijah said to this woman, great woman, he said, Can I introduce you to the king or can I introduce you to the captain who's in charge of the king's affairs? And she said, no. She said, I'm content with my own. I'm content with what I have. You see, having that contentment means that she didn't do what she did to get anything forward. She just wanted to make a difference in somebody else's life. But Elijah wouldn't settle for that. Elijah realized that what she was doing was above and beyond what was expected. So Elijah the prophet asked his servant, Jehazi, isn't there something we can do for her? Jehazi, his servant, replied, well, she doesn't have a child and her husband is old. You'll find this in the fourth chapter around the 14th verse. And so the prophet Elijah then declared, he said, this time next year, you will be blessed. In the following year, she was blessed to have a child. You see, God can do more than you can ask or even imagine. Some of us want things, but how many of you know that God can give you stuff that money can't buy? Amen. Hallelujah. I would just want to have somebody acknowledge that money can't buy everything. That's Hallelujah. Right. That's right. But when you're blessed, God can provide you with things that you could not have even imagined or even conceived. So a year follows and she is blessed with a child. But a few years later, this same son became sick and soon died. And after the boy had died, those who did not know her situation, those who did not know her suffering, 
When they saw her, they asked her, how are things in your life? And the Bible says that this woman of faith, though she had lost her son, this woman responded to anyone who encountered her, who didn't know her story, didn't know her suffering. Her response was, it is well. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It is well. Yeah. Although she, she had shown compassion, although she had given so much to help the work of God's kingdom and had been blessed with a son, that blessing was taken from her and no one would have blamed her if she had gotten angry. No one could have blamed her even if she had decided I'm going to give up on my faith in God but instead her response to her pain was it is well. Say to God when you go through something like that and you begin to see things in your life falling apart and you know you've been trying to do nothing but good and you keep praying and you keep believing and you keep holding on yes. but all the events surrounding you seem to be a tsunami of trouble and pain and isolation and fear I wonder if you can stand with this Shunammite woman and say even though you don't know all that I'm going through I'm going to still say it is well, instead of complaining to God and getting bitter, she hurried to get to the man of God. And by her actions of faith, her son's life was restored. Hallelujah. Why? Because God had not forgotten. It may seem bleak, but God had not forgotten. So it is in our text this morning, as we look here in this 8th chapter, it's the same woman, the same woman who had seen all of her dreams be put to death at the death of her son. That same woman whose faith was tested to the very end, that same woman who knew only to say, it is well, and God brought me to it, there must be a reason. If God allowed it, it must be a reason. But all I know is that no matter how dark it is, I need to get to God and to give Him my petition. And whatever God's will is, I'm satisfied. This woman, the same woman, here in the 8th chapter. It is in this chapter that God has been seeking to get the people of Israel to repent of their wickedness. And to return from their evilness. And to turn back to him. Over and over. God is trying to get the attention of his people. Over and over. God has been speaking to Israel. To say the wages of sin is death. Over and over. God is speaking to Israel. To declare you reap what you sow. Over and over. God has spoken to this nation. Over and over. God has spoken to our leaders. Over and over. God has spoken to you. To declare that my way is the only way. There is a way that seems right unto man. But the end thereof is death and destruction. And so in this 8th chapter. God determined. To get their attention through this famine. Understand the text is clear. Elijah spoke to the woman in verse number 8 and verse number 1 chapter 8. And he declares, the Lord has called for a famine. And it shall come upon the land for seven years. The Lord has called for a famine, and it will last for seven years. It is not my place to declare, but I will speak these words. What the world is going through now 
is by the permissive will of God. Because God has declared, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I heal the land. You see, my friends, God had told Elijah, let my people know there's a famine coming. And that famine is not designed to destroy them, but to awaken them, to turn from their evil ways. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 16 begins to describe God's plan. God said to his people in Deuteronomy 11 and 16, take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heavens, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and yet and lest ye perish quickly from the good land which the Lord giveth to you. Saints of God, I am confident to say to you that God is doing something right now around this world to open our eyes to see you can't play with God. You can't pretend that you are God. God says, I am God, and beside me there is no other. God does not delight in punishment, but he won't ignore wickedness forever. We have to get our lives right. We have to get it straight right now. We have to turn from our wicked ways and turn to God and put God in his rightful position. No longer is it okay to say if I have the right Saints of God, when God steps into 
a widow, hallelujah, her husband had died, and in her culture, women who were widows were not held in high regard. She had no way of knowing, praise God, when she left, whether the place she was moving to would even accept her where she was going. All she could do, my friends, was to put her faith, praise God, in the hand of God. She had to put her faith in the word of God. But let me tell you her story. Seven years passed. Hallelujah. And when she returns from her exile, her greatest fear had come true. Have you ever experienced a setback in your life when your greatest fear came true? Even though you thought you were doing God's work, something went from bad to worse. Even when you thought God was covering you, you got some bad news. Even when you thought the Lord was on your side, your enemy seemed to catch you by the skies. Can I get a witness? She came back home. Yes, she did. Her worst fears had come true. Her property had been confiscated. Her property had been occupied. We don't know what happened. Maybe squatters showed up to try to take what was hers. We don't know. Maybe the king confiscated what she had. But can I tell you something? That which God has for you is for you. Say it. 
will not only restore you whole, but he'll give you interest on top of it. Hallelujah. Can I get a shout hallelujah? He won't just restore you whole, but he'll give you even more. Hallelujah. You see, this is a glimpse of God in his kingdom. Ultimately, we, just like this woman, we're at the mercy of the king. We're at the mercy of the king. We're at the mercy of God. That's why in Romans chapter 9, verse 14 through 16, it tells us, what then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. It's because of his mercy that we are not consumed. Just like this woman was at the king's mercy, we, you, me, we are at God's mercy. My Bible says his mercy endures forever. Can you say that with me? His mercy endures forever. When she went to the king, she was hoping, hallelujah, just to have her property restored. But she was blessed with much more. When we go to the king of kings, it's not hope, but faith that keeps me standing. Even in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of hurricanes, floods, and fires, and earthquakes, and wars, and famine, and injustice.